So welcome to Adding Value to Local Food. Annette Dunlap is with us from the NC Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. She is their food business specialist and agribusiness development specialist. Annette provides one-on-one -on -one consultation workshops and resources for value-added food entrepreneurs. And she moderates the NC Food Biz listservs and sends out a regular newsletter on current trends in the food industry. Thank you, Julia. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to talk with you this afternoon more on the early stage market research as you are thinking about whether or not there's actually a customer base for your market. So let's take a look. So I suspect that there are a few of you out there that like to make your own sauces or perhaps your own jams, maybe a dressing. And you've probably had friends and family that have told you how absolutely delicious it is and that it's something that you ought to think about going into business with. And you get really excited about it because there is something glamorous at the front end about thinking of going into business. But here's the reality. There are plenty of other people who are already out there who are selling a product just like yours. This photograph is taken from the lobby of one of the major co-packing businesses here in the state of North Carolina. This is just a small section of what this co-packer has lining two walls of that four-wall room. So if you take a look at what just this co-packer is producing and compare it with what else is available on the grocery shelf that is produced nationally, you begin to understand that you would be entering into an extremely competitive market, and it's extremely important that you think about what it's going to take and whether or not you actually have a market out there in order to have a business. So here are some questions that you need to research before you begin to spend your money in looking into developing a product to go into production. First and foremost, take a look at who your competition is. Go to the supermarkets, go to the grocery stores, take a look at what other products are out there that are in the category that you're thinking of entering into. The next thing you need to do is some market research. Who's going to buy your product? And by that I mean you need to really look at the buying the characteristics of the person who's going to spend the money. Is it going to be more of a woman or a man? Is it going to be somebody who has a family or a single person or an empty nester? Are you looking at millennials? Millennials, are you looking at boomers? Are you looking at Gen Xers? What's their income level? What's their education level? Gary's just talked to you about how important convenience is. Is this somebody who is pursuing very active and therefore convenience and food is essential? These are all the kinds of things you need to think about to build a customer profile about who your potential target market is. The next is how often will they use your product? I work with a lot of food entrepreneurs. One of their big problems is they're very successful in selling that first bottle when they do a demo in the store, but they never get a repurchase. They have trouble getting a loyal customer base who's willing to go in and buy that product off the shelf when they're not prompted to do so because somebody is there doing a demo and reminding them that that product is there. If you're looking at placing your product in stores, one of the things the buyers in those stores are going to ask you is how is your product different from the other products that are similar to it? If you can't come up with a quick 25 word or less description of why your product is really different and noticeably different than all the other products in the category, you're not going to get very much of a favorable hearing from the category buyer for the stores. That ties into where you think you're going to sell your product. I have a lot of folks who really have a dream of being in the traditional supermarkets. Whole Foods is a, is a big favorite of people that I work with. But I can tell you that getting into retail is not only difficult, it's not necessarily profitable. Have you thought about selling at farmer's markets? Have you thought about looking at online opportunities? So where you sell is very critical. This is another area where a lot of people do not do their homework, and that is what it will cost you to make your product. You may have a product that you will be permitted to make in a home kitchen. If your kitchen can pass uh, inspection, that's going to be your lowest cost way to get started. But if you are not able to do that, you should look at a shared use kitchen. A co-packer should be your producer of last resort. That is the most expensive way to get started. And then the last thing you need to do is figure out how much you need to charge for your product. 
you need to be thinking about a gross margin at a minimum of 50%, preferably 55 to 60% in order to be able to even make any money. Because the purpose of a business is to stay in business, and that means making a profit. So when you are doing some basic financial planning, here are some startup costs that you need to be considering. I recommend forming a little limited liability corporation in order to protect your personal assets. You may want to get a website, but even if you don't put a website up initially, go ahead and secure your domain name. Also reserve a business Facebook page and a business Twitter account at a minimum. Other social media may also work well for you. You, you will probably need to go through NC State to get recipe testing. If you're told that your product requires you to attend the acidified food school, that's an additional cost. And then while the North Carolina Department of Agriculture Food and Drug Protection Division does not charge for a label review, you may have to pay to put the nutrition facts on the label. That's usually done through NC State. If you go through a co-packer, you will be paying to have a test batch run. One of the major co-packers here has a 75-gallon minimum run. If you go through a shared use kitchen, you will have to purchase your supplies, your packaging supplies, your labels, and your ingredients, which you can see are listed on the uh, slide here. You also need to purchase a UPC code, and you want to buy your own code, not from a reseller. So that is a little more expensive than if you go through a reseller. And then you will be required to have product liability insurance. All of these are costs that you need to be figuring out as you are putting together your business plan. So when we look at it, you want to take your projected revenue, what you think you're going to make, subtract your cost of goods sold and all your related direct production expenditures to get that gross profit margin. Again, 50% or better. From your gross profit margin, take out your indirect or fixed costs for your net profit. And as you can see, I've repeated it again. So that's something I want you to take away from my presentation today, and that is what your minimum gross margin needs to be to have the potential to make your business a financial success. The other aspect of what you need to do is figure out what your possible market share is. This is data that comes from a resource called Simply Math. It is a freely available resource through the North Carolina Public Library System. I will be happy to work with you to show you how to use this um, database. You do need to have a library card from your own public library in order to access this material. So what I've done is I have looked at the number of households in Apex, Cary, and Raleigh. I have looked at what the household average is for purchases of suites, what that total amount is for each of those communities, and then I have figured out what the potential sales are if I have a half percent market share, three quarters of a percent of market share, or one percent market share. And you can see those figures there. For a startup, that's still pretty high, but that's where you can begin to get freely available figures to start to understand what your revenue potential is. So before you start paying for your testing and for your other expenses, going back to what I said earlier, you need to figure out who's going to buy your product. You need to figure out how much they are likely willing to pay for your product. Figure out where you're going to sell it. Figure out how you will produce it. And then how much money you're going to need for startup. In other words, you need to develop a business plan. And as Jillian indicated, that's something that I can assist you with if you are interested. It's a free. You can consider me a prepaid tax resource because your state tax dollars have paid my salary. So this is my contact information. And uh, I will be here. If you've got any questions, definitely log them in. Thanks so much.